the case involving Sarah Boone and Jorge Torres Jr. began with a tragic sequence of events that led to Torres Jr.'s death. In February 2020, Torres was found dead in a suitcase, and a video of him calling out to his girlfriend Sarah went viral. Sarah. That's my name. Don't wear it up. While Sarah shrugged off the rumors by saying that she was just playing a game of hide and seek, the dark secrets behind the brutal murder of Torres remain a mystery. On the fateful day of February 24, 2020, at 1.01 p.m., the Florida police get a shocking call from Sarah Boone, reporting that her boyfriend was found dead in their Winter Park apartment. She informed the 911 dispatchers that she had been playing a game of hide-and-seek with Torres the night before, and they thought it would be funny if Torres got inside the suitcase. According to the arrest report, Boone said they were happily drinking wine and playing games. At one point, she just went upstairs and passed out on the bed. She said that she woke up in the morning to find Torres unresponsive in the suitcase. She tried CPR on him, but all in vain. Torres's body lay lifeless in the suitcase. Minutes after the failed attempt to get Torres back to life, the Orange County Fire Department came and confirmed his death. What began as a joke turned out to be a horrific incident whose details still stay a mystery to this day. When investigated, the detectives found two surprisingly horrific videos on Sarah's iPhone. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. Fuck you. Sarah. <laughs> Fuck you. Sarah. <laughs> Stupid. Sarah. That's my name. Don't wear it up. Sarah. I can't fucking breathe, babe. Yeah, that's when you do when you choke me. Sarah. 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 <laughs> Sarah, I can't breathe, babe. That's on you. Sarah, I can't breathe. It's on you. Sarah. Reel around some. I want to get video for it extra. Because <laughs> I got this. Sarah. Reel around Sarah. some. Sarah, I can't. I can't breathe, babe. Oh. That's what Sarah. I feel like when you chewing on me. Sarah! I Fuck can't you! Breathe, Sarah. Yeah. You should probably shut the fuck up. Sarah. As opposed to what Sarah reported to the police, it was not all fun and games for Torres. The two videos showed Torres zipped inside the suitcase, banging on the top of the bag, begging Sarah to let him out. However, Sarah repeatedly taunts him, saying, This is for everything that you've ever done to me. Torres tells Sarah that he couldn't breathe and to please let him out. To which Sarah smirked and replied, That's on you. That's how you made me feel when you cheated on me. That's how you made me feel when you choked me. Chilling, right? The two videos were recorded after 11 p.m. and just a few hours before Sarah called 911. Sarah claimed that she was unaware when she recorded those videos, but from looking at it, you could tell that she was clearly filming it for fun. When the detectives asked her to see the two videos, Sarah watched it for a moment and then refused to see it any further. Is it long? Because I don't know how much I can take. Mm-mm. No. I don't know how much I can take. Do I have to watch this? I continuously throw up. I don't sleep. I don't want to see it, if that's okay. <clears throat> well, it's on your phone, and you can either explain it or we take it for what it is. Yeah. We're just trying to give you the opportunity to tell us what's going on. That's it. <clears throat> it's that long? Two minutes. No. It's for everything you've done to me. <clears throat> for everything you've done to me. Fuck you. 
And it's Fuck just, you. That's you, Sarah. your voice. Stupid. Sarah. It's my name. Don't wear it up. Last time we talked to you, you had said that you put him in the suitcase, he had two fingers hanging out, and you I went to I flipped him over. I flipped him over, and that's where it was. There's two different videos and a still picture where, yeah, it shows you flipping him in different positions, and him saying that he can't breathe, and you saying, fuck So you. this is upside down. So in order for him to have gotten into it, it was flipped up. Right. It was flipped up normal. Yeah. Like as if you're packing something. So this is upside down. Guys, this is killing me right now. So this image is upside down and then this small video that occurred eleven minutes later, it's flipped over the other way. Closer to your dining room table. Okay. Now he's obviously still in there. So he didn't how did that how did it go from the back to the front? I flipped it. Okay. My plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. Well, that's what you did. Yeah. But not intentional of. No, you told me you went upstairs because what? you were Stop getting here. ready for bed. Stopped here. Okay, but here? show me where you can see any fingers coming out. Because there's it's, the end. It's And his head's right here. Mm -hmm. So going like this, rather than going all the way up, it's like this. But why is he saying I can't breathe, and why is he pushing on it as if he can't get out? And it doesn't it's, show a hole. You, there's, there's no, no hole. Out. There's no fingers. I don't see his fingers. There's no hole. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, I don't know, like, what you want me to tell you. I'm just mm -hmm. showing you. I'm just telling you what we see yeah. and what we've heard from the other I understand. Video. I understand. He's begging to let, for you to let him out. You sound... You're laughing in the beginning, and then in the end, it sounds kind of like a no. It's not malicious. Well, saying fuck you. It's not malicious. Then what is that? What does fuck you mean to you? Well, like if you were to, if I were to tell my Oh, like he does. Like I get called <laughs> everything but a white woman. So okay. I, my intention was not to leave him in there. Please understand that my intention was not. To leave him in there. But you went upstairs thinking yeah. that he could get himself yes. out, but the video shows That's at what no I told point you. when I see his fingers. And He'll be up here any minute. Like, and then 30 minutes later, he didn't show. And he's telling me. And I he can't, can't wake breathe. up. Do you he's think he's joking? You told me he was laughing, and I. We were before. The video, there's, there's no. When he first got in there? Just as the video showed Torres begging to get out of the bag and Sarah abusing him. She asked to turn off the video as it was too much for her. The detectives wanted to know the reason why, as a human being, if someone was saying that they couldn't breathe and to let them out, she walked away from the scene. Sarah had only one thing to say. I didn't do it intentionally. She said that she didn't zip the suitcase till the end and that she left a hole for Torres to breathe through. She also claimed that when she left to go upstairs, she could see Torres's two fingers come out of the suitcase to open it, and that's why she left him alone. Clearly, she was lying because the video showed how Torres was struggling to get out of the suitcase and begging Sarah to open it. One thing, however, that didn't make sense was that the suitcase was lying in a different position in the second video than it was in the first one. It was flipped over and on the side of the living room which clearly meant that Sarah had tried to flip him over while he was still inside the suitcase. On top of that, the autopsy reports found scratches on Torres's back, a big scratch on the back of his neck, bruising on his shoulder, and a dent on his forehead. He also seemed to have a cut on his lip. It meant that Sarah might have hurt him while he was in the suitcase and then left him to die. But it's just a theory that Sarah doesn't seem to agree with at all. Everything seemed a bit bizarre because Sarah's statements did not match the videos or the autopsy reports. When interrogated about the same, 
she tried to twist her words to make sense of the events that happened on that fateful night. The truth remained that Torres suffocated to death while Sarah kept laughing at his pleas. Sarah mentioned that she and Torres were in an abusive relationship, but she always walked out of the situation before anything physical could happen. She also mentioned that Torres was a drunk, and that she was always trying to keep him on the right path, helping him recover from his drinking problem. However, Torres couldn't always handle his work and came home drunk. He even tried to smash the TV in their living room once. Sarah tried to portray Torres as a raging drunk. As a matter of fact, the two were quite drunk on that fateful night as well. However, Sarah claimed that she is not a drunk and that she can never get drunk because she always likes to stay in control of whatever is happening around her. On further investigation, the police found out that Sarah Boone wasn't as innocent as she was trying to act. According to court documents, there had been a detailed history of domestic violence between Sarah and Jorge. The two had been arrested multiple times in Orange County for battery on each other. She managed to blame Torres even then, saying that Torres dragged her upstairs and hurt her right eye for talking to some guy at a bar. On the other hand, Torres told the police that Sarah tried to strangle him, and if he hadn't punched her, she might have incapacitated him. The deputies were clueless even back then because they couldn't figure out who the primary aggressor was. Additionally, Torres had three battery charges in 2019, with the most recent one being in September. Sarah also asked for a temporary injunction for protection at that time. What's even more surprising is that Boone paid for Torres's bail every time and got back with him. Seems like there's more to the story than Sarah's letting on. On further questioning by the detectives, Sarah let it slip out that she passed out on her bed, and that's why she didn't know that Torres couldn't get out of the suitcase. Of course, she ended up blaming it all on the drinking, even though she claimed she couldn't get drunk. I'm blaming it on the wine, she said. None of her statements made any sense at the time. She kept refuting her own statements. When the detectives asked her about the injuries on Torres's body, she just shook her head in denial, saying that she didn't know anything about the injuries, even though she was the only one with him that night. The detectives kept badgering her to explain how someone could walk away from the love of their life while he was literally battling for his life. However, Sarah kept saying that it was unintentional and that she never meant for it to go this far. It was supposed to be a game and Torres was supposed to come upstairs and sleep with me. The detectives even asked her that if Torres didn't come upstairs, wasn't it her duty to go back and check on him? But Sarah blamed it on the wine, saying that she passed out after waiting for him for 30 minutes. She kept saying, what is it that you want me to admit? If you are saying that I left him in that suitcase and just went up to sleep, then I will never admit it because it is not true. Now how could you sum up this terrible incident when the answers keep going in a circle? Well, you can start with the facts. Jorge Torres was lying dead in a suitcase with injuries on his body. He was with his girlfriend playing hide and seek. There was no one else around to witness or commit the horrific murder of this man. What lies as evidence are the two videos showing how angry Sarah was with her boyfriend and that she was clearly seeking some kind of revenge. Even though Sarah seems firm in her statements that everything was unintentional and under the influence of alcohol, it doesn't change the fact that a man lost his life because of the actions of his own girlfriend. Whether it was intentional or not, a man had to lose his life because of a silly game. Sarah Boone has been arrested for second-degree murder and her trial is scheduled on May 3rd 2024. The trial was supposed to be held on January 29th, but ultimately got cancelled as per court records. This wasn't the first time that Boone's trial had been pushed back. Her trial got cancelled quite a few times in the last four years, because the public defenders were not ready to represent Boone. Nobody was. Apparently, this would be her eighth attorney in 2024. Initially, Sarah tried to contact her attorneys with letters asking them to give her more information on what was going on and what should be done next. However, the attorneys had little to say to her and kept their distance. Sarah also tried to contact the judge saying that she had been represented unfairly. She is expecting to be represented by the battered women's defense at the next trial in May 2024. What Sarah has done is unexplainable, and her statements or explanations just didn't add up. 
Even women's shelters refused to find any psychologists who were willing to testify for such a notorious act. No one was able to understand the logic behind playing such a dangerous game, if it was a game at all. If this was a game or a calculated murder, time will tell. For now, it looks like the justice system is working hard to bring justice to Jorge Torres. We're all waiting for Sarah's trial and hoping that the truth comes forward. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any more true crime videos. See you in the next video.